दभुतव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए घनश्याम महाराज नी जे हरिकृष्ण महाराज नी जे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और अटमोस्ट डियर beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagat Ji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. In our life, every day, for some more than others, we tend to sit on an emotional roller coaster where there is ups and downs, ups and downs. More so, looking from the perspective outside of religion, we tend to uh, encounter problems in our life, may it be socially or financially, or may it be on the basis where physical ailments or illnesses occur. But every day is kind of like a roller coaster. Some days we're going up, some days we're going down. Some days we're going up, some days we're going down. But what puts religion above the worldly life is the understanding it gives to stay stable in one's day-to-day -day life. The understanding that is obtained from a religious perspective pretty much unleashes us from this roller coaster and keeps us on a stable ground a stable, steady, straight, flat ground where everyone enjoys. How so? Because there is no other obstacles. There is no going up and down. It's just one smooth, steady level. But that kind of understanding can only be attained in religion. If you're in high school, there's difficulties such as peer pressure or examination, anxiety, SAT, ACT, such kinds of difficult examinations to determine your future, which make you anxious. And through that point, you tend to take a role or you tend to take a, a turn in your life where you develop mood swings going up and down, up and down. But the very factor where religion helps us on this basis, keeps us on steady ground, is why it's very valued and why it's very, very important to possess in one's life. What kind of understanding for this simple, you can say, cure or simple illness? The cure is also not too difficult if one can grasp the point. Every day up and down, up and down, what's the reason for that? Well, it's all in our understanding. And in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's religion, in the Swaminarayan religion, in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swaminarayan talks about such kinds of situations, circumstances, 
and how to deal with them and how to get by them and live a very healthy, happy, simple, yet efficient life. What each and every person is pretty much dreaming to have. Bhagwan Swami Narayan openly says in his Vajtamrud, the best way to live a life here on this earth and also to attain spiritual heights in the world after. So for today's topic, for this illness of up and down, there is one cure, and that is to believe Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be Sarva Karta, meaning all doer. Whatever is happening right now, whatever happened before, and whatever happened in the future, or will happen in the future, is all due to my Bhagwan Swaminarayan. It's all due to his wish, is all due to his power. And even Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachanamurt, he says that in Gadada, first chapter, 27th Vachanamurt, Bhagwan's exact words, he says that everyone wishes to worship God, but their understanding differs. But God fully resides in the heart of a person who possesses the following understanding. The earth remains stable and trembles. The, star remain, the stars remain steady in the sky, the rains fall, the sun rises and sets, the moon appears and disappears, waxes and wanes, the vast oceans remain constrained within their boundaries, a drop of liquid develops into a human possessing hands, feet, a nose, ears, and a rest of the ten, bo ten indriyas, the clouds through which lightning strikes float unsupported in the sky, these and a countless variety of other wonders are due to the form of God that I have attained. With this understanding, he has the conviction that no one except the incarnate form of God is a cause of these wonders. He realizes the countless wonders which have occurred in the past, those which are currently taking place, and those which will occur in the future are all due to the manifest form of God that I have attained. In this world, we see numerous, numerous different kinds of uh, phenomena. Things in just simple nature that are not comprehensible to the human mind. How, the cl cl how, how clouds are able to stay afloat without any kind of support. Same thing with the stars. How time to time, on a daily basis, without missing even one single day, the moon and sun rise and set, wax and wane, without any kind of delay. If someone really thinks about this, it's beyond science. And even science right now is making different exceptions, saying that, yes, there is another power that's doing all these things. Yeah, scientists have figured out you know, that uh, due to this kind of... Uh, access uh, angles of the earth, the, s the sun is seen on this point, the moon is seen on this point, etc., so on and so forth. But on a timely basis, the clouds also stay unsupported, all these different kinds of phenomena. There's only one factor to that, and that's Bhagwan Swaminarayan and, and how his greatness is seen here, where Everything that we see before, right now, in the present time, and in the future is all due to his wonder, his greatness. But this is very difficult to keep um, during such kind of circumstances, ad adverse circumstances. But we want to take a look into the life of uh, Sadhguru Muktanan Swami and Brahmanan Swami and how and what kind of... Uh, situation they encountered and how they dealt with it, meaning what kind of understanding they kept so that in our life we may not even deal with this kind of, uh, um, you can say, situation, but even on a smaller scale, how we should keep understanding as well. The story's name is Sarvakarta, Swami Narayan Hare. Sri Maharaj used to send his saints across the lands of India to spread satsang. 
During their travels, saints had to tolerate insults and slander, yet they wished for the well-being of their enemies and guided others on the path of God. In that time, Bhagwan Swami Narayan uh, used to send his santos to do vichran, meaning uh, travel around many different regions and uh, preach about the true philosophy of God, who he is, and spread the Swami Narayan religion. But due to the opposition, as all of you know, most of you know, um, they had to face a lot of uh, slander and insults. Yet, uh, they traveled around and worshipped God themselves and also helped others worship God. On one occasion, Brahman and Swami and Muktan and Swami were traveling through Gujarat. While traveling, they came across a wicked-minded and jealous saint. He did not like any kind of saints, especially Bhagwan Swami Narayan saints. Nevertheless, the wicked saint was strong and brutal, so he o overpowered both Brahman and Swami and Muktan and Swami. He tied them up to a wooden pillar. I mean, nowadays we don't see these kinds of uh, brutal actions uh, occurring to saints, but in that time, there were also saints that were false, um, that just had w worn clothes of a saint, but did not follow any kind of rules. And uh, one of the saints that Brahman Swami and Muktan Swami encountered while they were traveling was uh, of such kind of tendencies. So he uh, had a, a very, very uh, hatred towards the Swami Narayan religion. So he tied these, uh, tied these, uh, both these uh, Nan Santo up into a pillar. And um, let's see what happens, what they did next, what he did next. The wicked saint threatened both the saints that he is going to cut off their ears and nose. Now, he, he had taken out a knife and he was ready to shave both of the santos' nose and ears off. In that situation, just think, as a saint, Bhagwan Swamiran has given rules not to perform any kind of violence. So, one cannot do anything, if you think about it. One can only run away. One cannot say anything. One cannot physically do anything. One has to just tolerate. But running away was not an option because they were tied up. So what to do? Well, this wicked saint had taken out a knife and he was sharpening his knife up and showing it to Brahmanan Swami and Muktanan Swami and telling him that I'm going to cut your nose and ears off. And this was real because that wicked saint knew that Brahman Swami and Muktan Swami did not even have or possess any kind of money or any kind of possession. So what can they take from them? Nothing. But a form of hatred that, you know, this, these two are saints of Swami Narayan. So if I kill two of them, at least two of them will die. And when I meet more, I will kill more of them. Meaning he wanted just to uh, completely uh, tarnish the reputation of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his saints in that time. So while the saints were, sh while the wicked saint was sharpening up his knife, Brahman Swami said to Muktanan Swami that if he cuts off our ears and nose, people will, will think that we have done something wrong. Due to that, we have received this kind of punishment. Well, in that time, um, to cut off one's nose and ears is more kind of like an insult uh, instead of a, instead of like a like a punishment or like torture. It's more like you know uh, your reputation is lost. You have done something very shameful. That's why uh, people's nose and cut uh, nose and ears would be cut off. Uh, due to that time, it was a ritual in that time. In, in this time, present time, there is no kind of uh, slander like that. But Swami was, uh, you know, talking to Muktan Swami on the right side of the pillar and asking that, you know, what will we do? Uh, what will people think of us? Because uh, this saint is about ready to, you know, cut off our nose and ears. Calm and stable. Muktan Swami explained to Brahman Swami, everything happens by the will of God. He is Sarva Karta. With this thought, they awaited their fate. Now, Muktan Swami was the idol of saintliness. Muktan Swami was the idol of understanding. Muktan Swami was a mother-like figure. 
And we can see in this situation that all three roles he maintained by giving ease to Brahman and Swami, by telling him that, don't worry, Bhagwan is Sarvakarta, Bhagwan is the all-doer, and let's wait about our fate, but everything happens by the will of Bhagwan. In Bhagwan Swami Aran's divine Vachnamrut, Gadara first chapter, Gadara middle chapter 21st Vachnamrut, Bhagwan says, in fact, it is God who is the inspirer of everything, of place, time, karma, and maya. Therefore, only God is the all-doer. Now, let's go back to our life currently here. You know, in school, we might have a difficult time uh, socially. We try to make friends, but no one wants to become friends with us. Or on a financial level, you know, we want to get a job, but no one hires us, even if we have studied and we, even if we have got a degree. Such kinds of situations happen, and people tend to lose faith in God. People tend to say that, I come to Mandir on a weekly basis. Um, I tend to uh, worship God. I do puja every day. Yet, I do all these kinds of things. Yet, why doesn't God look toward my effort? Why doesn't Bhagwan see what I am doing for him? Why isn't he giving me the fruits I want? This is a problem. First and foremost, whenever we come and enter into religion, we should not have any expectation of attaining something back from God except his rajipo or his happiness. When we do something such as devotion or come to mandir, so that in return, Bhagwan will give us something for our social life or our financial life or for any other purposes, and we don't get the results we want, that's when we tend to blame Bhagwan, saying that, I did everything for you. I've been doing your puja for the past five years, or I've been doing Mada or Dunvat, or I've been coming to Mandir and listening to Katha and associating with saints for the past 10 years. Yet, why have you not fulfilled this? Bhagwan is not like, a, a person who just gives away everything. Yes, he is that way in one way, but you have to understand, whatever Bhagwan is doing is for our own good. He is looking in our future, in our long future. Now suppose you want to become a millionaire, but, and you keep praying to Bhagwan and doing his devotion and saying, you know, please make me a millionaire, please make me a millionaire. Yet, you never become a millionaire in your life. Well, think about it. Bhagwan is also thinking that if I make this person a millionaire, then will he even come and enter into Mandir? Will he still worship me? Or will he then enjoy the, uh, the pleasures, the sense pleasures of this world by buying fast cars and enjoying uh, nice clothes and eating tasty food, etc., so on and so forth? Bhagwan is also weighing the scale here because in, in the end, all he wants to do is well for our soul. All he wants to do is take us to his akshradham and give us the bliss of his idol, which is permanent, stable, and everlasting. But the problem is that we tend to ask for things in this world and due to that, if we don't get the result we're looking for, we tend to let go of Bhagwan we tend to forget Bhagwan. We tend to put some kind of acquisition on Bhagwan, saying that this is your fault. Or we tend to stop believing in Bhagwan. This is our fault. Whenever one comes into religion, one should understand and believe that whatever I'm doing is to please Bhagwan, my Guruji, my Santo, and Bhakto. These four factors are the most important. But when our intention goes beside these four factors, that's when we get, to get into trouble and that's when Bhagwan also does not like what we are thinking. That's why we should be careful and understand his wish and only come to religion and perform worship of God for the sole purpose of pleasing Bhagwan. 
Our Puja Guruji has this tendency in his life. Anything or everything he does, he wants to please Bhagwan. Anything and everything. No matter what it is, if it's, if it's even... I've seen uh, and I've heard stories of Puja Guruji. When uh, Santos were very young, this is about 15, 20 years ago, uh, during the night time when Santos, all the saints would go to sleep, Guruji would go himself into the uh, toilets of the santos and wash each and every toilet, wash the showers with his own bare hands. Now, a saint who is the guru, who is the spiritual leader of thousands, doing this kind of seva, what does that represent? What kind of perspective is he holding? What do you think? Is he thinking that, Bhagwan, if I do this seva, then please, uh, you know, make more and more, uh, have more and more followers come and join uh, our religion, or may many, many buildings be built. No. All he wants is that, Bhagwan, I'm doing this because I'm your das, I want to please you. And with maima, with glory of God. This is Puja Guruji's life. If we think about it from a, a very, very subtle position, uh, it, it's, it's a very... I can say nonetheless, you'll not be able to find such kind of a saint on this earth like our Puja Guruji. What he does, how he is, his personality, his virtues, his uh, whole character, his uh, way of living is completely beyond this world. It's like he is in Akshardham, yet he is living here for the sole purpose of us also going to Akshardham. So getting back to our story here. Muktan Swami eased Brahmanand Swami by saying everything happens by the will of God. He is Sarva Karta. With this thought, they awaited their fate. In the, mean, <coughs> in the meantime, a devotee by the name of Raghavjat was passing by and saw the two saints tied up to, the, up to a pillar. He saw, th he saw the worried look on the faces of the two saints and asked the wicked saint, What are you doing? The wicked saint told his whole plan to Raghavjat, thinking that he would assist or at least enc encourage his idea. Hearing the cruel intentions of the wicked saint, Raghavjat became furious. He threatened the wicked saint to let the innocent saints go or else. <clears throat> Seeing the strong and powerful body of Raghavjat, the wicked saint became terrified and ran away. Then Muktan Swami and Brahman Swami blessed Raghavjat, seeing his loyalty. The moral is remain patient and believe God to be Sarvakarta, even in adverse circumstances and hardships. Meaning, <clears throat> no matter in our life what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, adverse circumstances we encounter, if we believe and if we keep patience that Bhagwan is doing this, Bhagwan is doing this, you know, and understand his wish, then with that patience and with that understanding, Bhagwan will definitely assist you and will definitely do well for you. But on the other side, if we lose faith in God, then Bhagwan doesn't have time for us either. If we look towards Bhagwan, he'll look towards us. That's his nature. That, that has been always his nature and that will always be his nature. But understanding that may small or big things happen in our life, day-to-day -day life, may it be a roller coaster. But through attaining such kind of understanding, believing that Bhagwan is Sarva Karta, all doer, one can become unleashed from this roller coaster and be put on very stable and steady and flat ground where one can stay and remain happy in life. Because the main factor after doing everything is to become happy. Now we see all these people in the world <clears throat> buying such kinds of uh, nice materialistic uh, pleasures, cars, buildings, houses, uh, <clears throat> you can say jewelry and um, clothing and etc. so on and so forth, electronic devices, etc., so on and so forth. Yet, their sole purpose is to become happy. 
But it's not their fault that they don't know that by worshipping God is the only way to become permanently happy. Due to that factor, they tend to indulge in these kinds of materialistic pleasures. But if we understand, and we are very fortunate to understand, that we have this Bhagwan Swaminara and we have Puja Guruji, we have Santos and Bhaktos with us, then outside of this pleasure, what else pleasure is there? So, <coughs> with such kind of understanding, Bhagwan Swaminarayan becomes pleased and one also uh, remains happy in life. And the main factor in life is to stay happy via the soul, not the body, and attain and worship God. So, seeing this, uh, keep this understanding uh, and remember the story of Brahman Swami and Muktan Swami and what understanding they kept. And in our day-to-day -day life, may it be in school or outside of school, such kind of things may occur. Yet, if you tend to understand Bhagwan to be Sarva Karta, He will always do good and He will always be on your side. One just has to keep patience. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.